السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers, my sisters, the day I die and you die, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says about that time, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَثِ if a human being passes away, Ibn Adam means the son of Adam, here referring to humankind at large. When a human being passes away, in anhu amaluhu, his deeds are cut from him or her. The deeds are cut from him or her, except three things. And then he goes on to mention how it is beneficial for the deceased when he has left behind some knowledge that people are benefiting from. Or he has left behind a child who is making dua for the, the, the parent. Or he has left behind a charity, the benefit of which continues beyond the death of a person. Those three things will help you when you've passed on. We have a trend in our societies and communities. Someone passes away and the rest of the people wake up and start saying, let's do something for the dead person. Whereas Allah Almighty has asked us to do it the other way around. I'm alive, let me do something for myself. If someone were to do something like, for example, a well or a masjid or some form of uh, something, a charity on your behalf after you've died, there is discussion amongst the scholars as to how valid or unvalid that is. But if you did it yourself when you're alive, there is no discussion, no debate. It is definitely there and it is yours, your deeds. So rather than wait for someone to do a well for you after you died and enter territory that yes, maybe, maybe not, that no one may talk to you about sometimes. You do it yourself. I did my well. I did my masjid. I did my things. I'm going to die. You're going to be alone in your grave. You're going to meet with Allah alone. Subhanallah. يَوْمَ تَأْتِي كُلُّ نَفْسٍ تُجَادِلُ عَن نَفْسِهَا On that day, every single soul is going to be defending itself. Not one person is going to say, hang on, before I defend myself, let me defend my son. Let me answer on behalf of my mother. No chance. Allah Almighty says it in a few places in the Quran. Ya rabbakum. O people, develop a consciousness of your Rabb, your Lord. O oh people, be conscious of that day. Be conscious of your Lord and the day that no parent shall avail his child and no child shall be able to avail the parent or defend them or benefit them in whatever way. And Allah's promise is absolutely the truth. That's what Allah says. In the haqq, it's the truth. فَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا Allah says, do not let this worldly life deceive you. It's very temporary. And do not let the big deceiver deceive you. Who is he? Shaitan. Shaitan deceives us. We lead our lives and we are continuing. Now, this short introduction is already half of my speech. Let me continue with the second half. Is it fine? The second half is... While you're alive, do something for yourself. You've just fulfilled salah. When you die, what do you want to continue? Have you done some deeds that inshallah will continue for you after you've passed on? Have you given sadaqa jariya? Have you taught people goodness? Have you sat with whether it's your children or whoever else and taught people some form of goodness that they can teach others who can teach others? Have you planted trees for yourself? from which fruit perhaps would reach others, whether it be here or anywhere else across the globe? Have you participated in benefiting humankind by doing something that is beneficial for them? Where is the masjid that you built for your own self and your own benefit? Every salah read in that masjid, you will get the reward for it. No doubt, bi'ithnillah. For as long as it was sincere for the sake of Allah, there goes. So start thinking about these beautiful deeds rather than leaving behind a legacy where we didn't teach anyone 
want anything we don't have. We didn't spend enough time with our children where they don't even know the deen properly. They'd probably be a curse for us after we've gone. Who knows? They may never pray for us. They would probably think good riddance when we've passed on. Or have we even developed ourselves in a way that subhanallah, we gave something in a good cause such that after we pass on, inshallah, it will continue longer and longer. May Allah Almighty grant us the strength. So if you notice, you're developing yourself, you're fulfilling your salah, you're improving right now for this worldly life, like Sheikh Murtada said, and mashallah, very correctly, that sometimes people tend to forget you have bad habits. As soon as the fast breaks, the first thing they do is light a puff. I don't, what, what do you guys call it? Subhanallah. Cigarettes. Okay. And the next best thing is they continue. The other day I was speaking to a crowd of people and saying, you know, seeking Allah's forgiveness is not that you're sitting with your shisha and whatnot and every little puff you're taking, you're saying, Astaghfirullah, Allahumma inna ka'afuun, tuhibbul afwa fa'afwani, then another, Allahumma inna ka'afuun. That's not how it works. That is not how, but people are doing this. May Allah Almighty grant us forgiveness. They ask you, but is it really, really haram? Come on, do not let this dunya deceive you. Don't let the shaitan make you justify the wrong you're doing. Become disciplined. Be a better person. Quit your habits. Quit those ways. You know what? When you do that for the sake of Allah, your soul begins to shine in a beautiful way. You start thinking of other good things. You start thinking of other good things. When you've done so much of goodness in Ramadan, you are sad that Ramadan is leaving. You are sad that there's only a day left. You are happy that there's one more day. The moon is not sighted. You're excited because you want one more day of Ramadan. But when your ibadah is not in order, you're happy to get out. Ooh, I can't wait for it to become shawwal. Because what? A true believer in shawwal continues with the sunnah fast. A true believer's life changes. It's not like this. May Allah Almighty strengthen all of us. So the aim of these few words is to remind myself to begin with to be a better person. Both with others as well as firstly with Allah Almighty. May Allah help us improve and, and increase our ibadah. And may Allah help us become the best of people with good hearts. Because it is only the one who has the healthy heart on the day of Qiyamah. Healthy in a way Allah has described. Free from association of partners with Allah. Free from engaging in acts of worship that were not taught by Allah Almighty through the blessed messengers who came to us. Free from the evil qualities. Only those who are free from that will be able to be calm, content on the day of Qiyamah. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On that day, the wealth and the children won't be able to help you except the one who comes to Allah with a qalbun salim. That heart that is clean, pure, straight, free from sickness and illness like I explained. But so my brothers, my sisters, the last few nights of Ramadan, this is probably the taraweeh that we are going to fulfill that would depict the end of this month of Ramadan. We have a beautiful iftar, if Allah gives us the life to witness it, that will be happening tomorrow and thereafter we will be enjoying the joy of Eid. On this particular day of Eid and prior to Eid, the fine detail going even to the meetings you are planning on the day of Eid, as well as the clothing you are planning to wear, and so much more, you need to make sure it's all in the pleasure of Allah and not in the displeasure of Allah. If Allah has given you a happy day, make Allah happy at least. Allah will be happy. But Allah's giving you a happy day and you're making shaitan happy because you know shaitan is also waiting to come out, mashallah. May Allah forgive us, strengthen us. Allah grant us ease. So with these few words, inshallah, we will commence Salat al-Taraweeh shortly. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad.